What's up guys, it's Jade's Corner back here again for a brand new Teen Wolf related video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be following up my season three B power scale video with my season four power scale video. So if you guys are ready for today's video, make sure you guys leave a like, also make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And when you do, and if you haven't already, hit that bell icon, set your notifications to all so that you never miss a future upload from me. I am gonna be posting a lot of content this month to start off 2022. On top of the fact that Teen Wolf the movie comes out this month so this month is easily going to be the biggest month for team wolf content of the year so if you don't want to miss everything including all stuff leading up to the last couple of weeks until teen wolf the movie officially releases subscribe to the channel this is the place you want to be for all of that without further ado let's hop into the main video <laughs> So at number 15 is going to be Lydia Martin once again. Of course, I already explained Lydia in the season three B power scale video. So I'm not gonna explain Lydia here again because it's pretty much the same reasoning I placed her at the bottom of that video. So Lydia Martin's gonna go at 15 at the bottom here. At number 14 is gonna be Carrie Hudson who was one of the werewolves from Satomi Idol's pack killed by Garrett and Violet. Pretty weak werewolf, not gonna lie. Got taken out by two humans. Granted, they were trained assassins, but still two humans uh, dropped out pretty quick. So yeah, weak werewolf, number 14. Number 13 is gonna be DeMarco, who was killed by Violet, of course. Um, he was the guy who brought all of the drinks to Lydia's um, lake house for the supposed quote unquote party they were having, which was a cover up for Liam's full moon. And he jobbed out pretty easily too to Violet as well. Even though Violet caught him off guard, still no excuse because if Scott was able to break free, he should have been able to break free too. So yeah, DeMarco, number 13 for me. Number 12 is gonna be Brett's younger sister, Lori. Again, another weak werewolf, doesn't really do much. Putting her at number 12 just because she's just there, to be honest. So Lori at number 12. And number 11 is gonna be Brett Talbot. Brett is stronger than a lot of the members of Satomi's pack. I would say he's probably the strongest beta Satomi has to offer because he's the only beta we even see from her pack do anything for more than five minutes on screen aside from Lori, but Brett's stronger than Lori. It's pretty apparent. So yeah, Brett's going to be at number 11 for me. At number 10 is going to be, I wouldn't say a controversial pick for now because this is this character's first introduction and he wasn't really the character we would see him become later on. But I think this is the proper placement for him for the time being. Liam Dunbar, uh, Scott's first beta. So Liam, in my opinion, is not weak. He's just placed here because I think everybody above this list is quite clearly stronger than him. Liam could definitely take on and beat everybody below him he might have some trouble with brett due to the experience factor but in terms of just pure fighting and you know just you know winning a fight i think liam could definitely beat everybody below him on this you know power scale ranking tier list so yeah liam is definitely at number 10 for me unfortunately i would put him higher but i just think everybody above him is definitely way stronger than liam is in this particular season so liam's gonna go here and number nine is gonna be malia tate as a beta wear coyote of course malia very very decent decently strong um wear creature still learning how to use her powers and still learning how to control them from Scott and Styles throughout the course of season four. Um, I wouldn't necessarily put her above number nine, but I do think that she could take out Liam for sure. I don't think that she could take out everybody else above her. And it's gonna be apparent once we get into the top eight, why? So yeah, Malia at number nine. At number eight is gonna be Kira Yukimura. Like I said in the season three V video, Kira in that season, because there weren't that many supernatural creatures in Beacon Hills yet, and it was really just mainly werewolves for the most part. In season four, we get introduced to a lot more different supernatural species, like a lot more that some of them are way more powerful than the Kitsune, in my honest opinion, or at least Kira as a Kitsune, because Kira is still an infant Kitsune, or infant Kitsune, rather, my apologies. 
Uh, she's still kind of young, doesn't really have a handle on all her powers yet, as well as her mother does, who is obviously going to be way higher on this list. So yeah, Kira at number eight, definitely not rocking with anybody above her. At number seven is going to be a controversial pick because you can argue she's more powerful than the number six and number five. And I would say so. It's just that in the bestiary, it's literally canon and confirmed that the next creature can literally fight on par with alpha werewolves and beat them for the most part. So that's the reason why I have this character placed as low as I do, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a, a shit storm in the comments of people saying, oh, you should put her higher, which I probably should have, but that's a conversation we can have after the video. So yeah, number seven is going to be Satomi Ido. A lot of you guys are going to be are going to be like, why is Satomi higher? It's because number six and number five, as I was mentioning before, Canon in the bestiary are known to casually beat alpha werewolves. So yeah, Satomi, unfortunately at number seven, plus she didn't really do much on her own. She kind of went to Scott for help a lot of the time, which is kind of embarrassing seeing that she damn near a hundred years older than him and has way more experience as an alpha. But the first situation she went for him, to, she went to him for help. I can understand the second situation is like, girl, you're an alpha. You're way stronger than Scott, at least from what we see now on screen until the finale. Why weren't you able to handle yourself and your business? It is what it is. At number six is going to be Patrick Clark. He was the Wendigo that Deaton took out in the penultimate episode of season four, A Promise to the Dead, and sent packing away to Eichen House. Uh, Patrick, like I said, Wendigos in canon in the bestiary, we know this to be true because it's actually written there. They're known to casually fight and beat alpha werewolves on a regular basis. So, yeah, Patrick would, in my opinion, if he was fighting seriously and taking the fight seriously, would beat Satomi slightly. I don't think it's a complete wash on Satomi's part, obviously, because Satomi's kind of crazy as an alpha. She was doing matrix style dodges and stuff, which I should have mentioned in her section, but it is what it is. Forgot to mention it there. But yeah, Patrick, he got taken out by Deaton, which was embarrassing. So that's why he's so low. And the next one to go, I think, is stronger than him simply because he puts up a better fight against the number one pick on this list and that is going to be sean walcott at number five the wendigo who is directly responsible for scott giving the bite to liam and it's the reason liam is even a werewolf in the first place so yeah sean walcott didn't really fight scott per se but was you know giving scott a little bit of trouble was pressuring him a little bit all he really did was kick scott towards the wall and that was it like i said they didn't really fight which was unfortunate because um, as I've been saying the last like minute or so, it is canon that Wendigos are strong enough to fight on par with alphas and beat them most of the time. So yeah, Sean Walcott, number five. And number four is going to be Noshiko Yukimura. Not going to explain her, kind of explained her and why she's so strong um, in the season three B video. So I'm not going to explain her here. This is where she goes. And quite frankly, which is funny, she was number four in the 3B video. So yeah, Noshiko's placement has not changed, which is hilarious to me. So yeah, number three is going to be Peter Hale as an Omega. Now, remember in the season two and three power scale when Peter was so low and I was telling you Peter was slowly gaining his power back and was slowly becoming that dude again. This is the season where we see Peter Hale at his absolute best, in my honest opinion, and we see Peter as that dude again. Now, he's not stronger than number one and certainly not stronger than number two, but Peter, for the showing he put out against Alpha Scott, was an absolute monster on complete demon time this season. Like, Peter was no joke. The fact that he was able to beat down Scott as much as he did says a lot more about Peter than it does about Scott. And yeah, Peter, Peter's great this season. He's strong. He's he very powerful. He was able to knock Malia out of commission with like one swipe, which is ridiculous. So yeah, Peter as an Omega number three, number two is going to be Kate Argent as a wear Jaguar. Now I'm pretty sure throughout most of this season, Peter knew deep down that Kate was stronger than him, but he knew that he was superior to her, not in terms of strength, 
but in terms of just overall presence because Kate didn't know how to control her powers, which is why she went to Peter for help in the first place. So Kate, of course, is number two for being an absolute, quite frankly, like Peter, a monster of just mauling people all throughout this season. Like Lydia even walked in on a body and I think in episode two and was like, I've never even seen that body part before in in my anatomy class or whatever the comment she made was it was ridiculous and plus everywhere she went she had her berserkers with her which just add to her old, not her actual strength but add to her strength in numbers because kate is never present without at least one or two berserkers with her so yeah if you're fighting kate expect to be fighting at least one or two berserkers and they're and them by themselves or they by themselves are hard enough to take out as it is so if you're fighting kate you're pretty much doomed to die unless you're somebody like a number one so yeah kate is number two at number one is going to be a tie because i simply could not choose between these two characters i was going back and forth on this all night yesterday while writing the official uh tier for this video and while thinking about it i couldn't i couldn't place one of the one over the other these two had to be tied at number one because i simply cannot choose Number one is going to be a tie between Scott McCall as a true alpha and Derek Hell as an evolved werewolf. Like I said, these two have equal showings, especially in Smoke and Mirrors. Scott's fight with Peter is the best we've ever seen Scott in the entire series. And Derek's feat with taking down Kate with relative ease, somebody who was able to beat Scott McCall fair and square in the previous episode with relative ease granted she had a little help from the from uh the berserker but the berserkers were um I, I would say they were fighting kira most of the time even though you see them switch from scott to kira but i'm pretty sure kate wanted the the kate wanted the credit of taking down scott so i'm pretty sure she fought him most of the time instead of the berserker so yeah the fact that Derek was able to take her down and then take down a berserker who everybody was scared of and was able to kill it in four seconds is kind of ridiculous. And the fact that Scott was able to break his berserker mask for the for not only how old he is, because I'm pretty sure Scott was still 17 at the time, and he's obviously the youngest alpha we've ever seen in the series. So he's still getting a hold on his powers, mind you. He masters a lot of his powers fully in this episode while fighting Peter, even having an ultra instinct Goku moment where he's literally dodging Peter's attacks on instinct and not getting hit, literally moving like a blur while dodging, which is insane. And then he literally shows feats of strength we've never seen from Scott in the series all the way up until this point, including uppercutting Peter up in the air like he was trying to perform an ultra combo from Super Street Fighter 4 or something. For all my gamers out there who get that reference so yeah scott and scott and derek in my opinion are tied at number one you guys might disagree but for me personally i simply cannot choose one or the one over the other although i'm pretty sure there's going to be arguments in the comments of course like there always are for who's stronger than the other scott or derek so that's going to do it for my season four power scale list make sure you guys like the video if you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys also subscribe to the channel and when you do hit that bell icon as mentioned at the start of the video set your notifications to all it's really really helpful for you guys if you guys want to come back and watch more videos you guys can by getting notified through that all uh notifications icon with the bell and with that all, and with that all said i'm jade make sure you guys have a great rest of your rest of your day or night whenever you guys are watching this video and i will catch you guys in the next teen wolf related video peace i can see you guys in the next one i'm out if you didn't know i have a second channel called world of jade where i talk about any and everything on there including marvel dc manga anime and comics as well if you want to hear me talk about other things aside from teen wolf check me out over there as well we just hit 600 subscribers on that channel and we're well on our way to a thousand subscribers so if you can help us reach that goal over there on that channel that would be greatly appreciated. If you haven't already, check out the link in the description of this video. It will lead you to my Discord. Lately, we've been having fun discussions talking about the new Teen Wolf movie, Vampire Diaries, Supernatural, and even my brand new novel series, True Alpha. Join the conversation now and become part of a larger community.